Yeah, so it would be like surprising for you to see like a kid hop out of a car after he parks the car. But if he was driving like a, a really nice driver, you know, who who are we going to say? When there's people who are nice drivers, it goes without saying, but so do signs on the ground, my pet peeve. The um, Do I need to explain why I don't like signs on the ground? No, you get it. But it's the same goes to the saying when there's like good drivers. Like, everyone's a good driver. I'm so surprised that in my lifetime I haven't seen anyone do something, like, erratic as I'm on the road. And I've spent some time in these streets. So, no, you see a kid hop out of a vehicle. He's, like, three feet tall, and he parks the car. That's surprising to you, right? It's, it goes without saying. But if the same logic can be applied to things that are, like, I don't know, you would be using a microscope with microscope would you even know what would be equivalent to that I, I say like probably 99% of people on the street wouldn't so and I'm not an optometrist but I do know that um, I've had in the past eye floaters and it's not uncommon it's just um, you see with like these strands these optic nerves and they're behind your eyeball or inside of them I guess and um, mine like broke and so flashes of light I guess and then um, see little black filaments whenever I'm in like a uh, snow uh, over everything and so those surface and I guess they're just dangling in my eye but your blind spot, surprisingly, is what you used to see. And it's inside of your eye. And this is what your pupils are directly in line with. And your pupils adjust. So my blind spot got acclimated because when I first had my eye floater, it was this black line. And then after like a day or two, it went away. And so like your blind spot adjusted to ignore it. And this is why your nose, you can look and cross your eyes and look down at your nose. But if you're not focusing on looking down at your nose, your blind spot blocks it out because there's more important things to do. And this is what I like to say God intended to be, but that's like hypercritical but it's directly what you can do to like denounce Darwin, to denounce Sigmund Freud. When I say denounce, I mean like they're dead, so they can't do any more work. It's so funny how like Einstein's work, he's so great, but like you can learn it if like you're, um, so like these things are damaging because they're making what's compromised in an immune system so people don't know if they're sick when they actually are that the next time something over the top hits them they get train wrecked once you figure out what's the ingredients these things are hydrogels and self-assembling technology enforced with lipid nanoparticles and it's like oh wow that's gonna hurt you pretty bad and that's why this bug protein chitinden the shell you can't get around this bugs have exoskeletons and chitin is what is toxic and the makeup of these exoskeletons and so if you're ingesting all of this it's gonna go perfect with the hazardous plastics that leach stuff and probably what parasites feed off of uh chitin and you start looking at this as what the carnivores are species and parasites carnivores of um exoskeleton bugs it's when the bugs have like no eyes on the lower scales it's like they say parasitical but if you look at a lot of the bacteria it's not like uh mind-boggling that they don't have eyes and when you start understanding what they're thinking and they're not seeing uh and their gravity is like the normal force it isn't our gravity you start like connecting these dots and it's like, shit. in the 50s uh there's like this acceptance 
and it has to do with feminism. I just heard a person say that they're Democrat because of they believe in feminism, and she's sold on that. And it, you know, she just had to pull me aside and say, you know, I watched the view. It's like, believe me, I already know type of thing. And so, but back into the 50s, the 40s, I don't know, it's just these movies I saw back then where you can tell the way that it was shot, that it was accepted with the guys putting their hands on the female. And so this is like what was accepted. And so the guys putting hands on kids, all of this stuff. We were running around a table in the last family event and they all had their stories of how they were brutally beaten by nuns. And so you have this trade-off within school, what the nuns did, like literally like peeling fingernails off of fingers with whoever discovered the methodology of waterboarding. Like just the procedural of these things, you wouldn't think they're horrendous, but then there actually are more with the waterboarding with uh, it's like it's a given that we have eyeballs. It's a given that animals, when you see them, like you've grown up with animals and you see that they have eyes like your entire life. The moment you see an animal without eyes, there's some like in the deep sea in the ocean or something. It's really groundbreaking and you're thinking, where are their eyes? How do they see that moment of non-inclusiveness is huge because what we're programmed to think, uh, pre-programmed to think is that like you have eyes. So just thinking that like how much of when you're from your embryonic state and being built up, how much is it a given that you're going to have a pair of eyes? Like in, I think Iceland or one of the well-off healthcare states, I mean countries, they abort babies who have Down syndrome. So they have a population of no Down syndrome kids. And this is when an embryo, it shows signs of like, in its genome, letters missing or not in order. So it's aborted. And so that's insubordinate prima facie would be the title of this video. But more back to in, like, the beating of feminism was in the, the 50s. That was like the whole movie in the colloquial. Um, no, but I, I get it. It was like I had like this feeling like where if I was in the um, 50s, how you I would want to like start getting aggressive and um even though I've, I've like never been but it's like literally like what they call a micro aggression or it's called like a passive aggression and it's just like this whole claim to fame we've got a property over something an entitlement but this is what the hierarchy they're doing with in medical there's these things called hydrogels and self-assembling technology. And this is found in insulin, but more so what's been the things that were accepted by the FDA. You're not allowed to say, or I'm not, because of uh, being insubordinate. But the, and so this is like this high aggression where who's profiting off these like the Pentagon, obviously, they drew up what these hydrogels and self-assembling technology is. And it's all these nanoparticles. And so we don't know the offshoot of nanoparticles, the payload. 1950s premise, but them doing it to the entire population of people who are not in their um, established position. It's the same thing. You know, I'm not a chemist, I don't know the names of all these compounds, but it's, um, the chemists that do, they know that with plastics, plastics, the most thing 
that's used, but it's when, and here's what gets me. There's these people trying out salsa and it was put into a plastic container and opened it. They're like, wow, it tastes like the container. And then obviously um, I was using like this plastic bag to put in pickled beets. And so after the pickled beets got put into the plastic bag, I kept it in there for like a long duration and then took it out and tried it. I had tried those pickled beets in a glass jar uh, several times and they taste just fine. But out of the plastic bag that had to get weighed, it tasted like cardboard tasted so bad and it was the same description as what these people tasting the salsa said uh that it tastes like this plastic stuff and so what these chemists are saying is that there's these dangerous properties inside of the plastics that they're putting in nowadays even though that they can put in safer ones and it doesn't compromise your immune system it just like puts you um in a state of inflammation and so that's dangerous have specific parasitical uh, behaviors in them so these plastics so I got hit by like this giant flock of bugs that are fresh out of being in hibernation it bo boggles me again how do all these bugs survive every year the winter that is like super cold well the answer is i was told by a banker they lodged their eggs inside the lining of houses and so is this you know something that we should be weary of and create things like dark room microscopes scopics to handle them uh, it's worth a shot no pun intended